say in advance of the committee as well. Very mm -hmm. useful. Um, before, because I got in earlier, I, I did have a look at some of the other authorities across the country uh, and also across the Merseyside Waste Authority. Uh, because we're, we're not that, we're bottom middle range inside the Waste Authority itself. We obviously have access to the same facilities that we do. So Holton around 43% of the rain, 43.6. And Sefton on 37.8 to our 35.9. So I'm just wondering, first, in our own area, why, why are those particular areas have got access to exactly the same sort of facilities doing better than we are? Can we, can we learn anything from that? And then, obviously, as we go wider, there are authorities <coughs> which, which may have a different name, but already hitting the 65%. He's driving and things at the top. They're already at 65%. We even just now approach East <coughs> Chester, Cheshire East, and we're already in the 50s. And, and look at some of the metropolitan uh, borough councils. You look at Trafford, they actually put their food waste in with their garden waste, but they still retain the garden waste part of it as being a subscription. But the food waste is free. So I'm just wondering, I know it had been tried in the past to have a mixed use of the garden waste and the food waste. Um, I'm just wondering, is that something we can revisit? Because the big cost of it last, you know, when we were talking about last time, having another bin and having another caddy, if it's just going to go into the, the same as the garden waste, maybe we can reduce that cost but still increase the side bin rates. In the spirit of looking forward to like the years for, 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 uh, 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 Steve. Uh, but, so just wondering, can we revisit some of those now technology's moved on, maybe things we discounted in the past that other authorities are doing, it might be possible, and they still actually do charge for their, their garden waste, you know, much more inside of it and see what people put in, but uh, maybe that's something we can have another look at. Do you wish to respond to those? Or, yeah. Um, I'll try to remember them all. Um, so to start, the, the other Merseyside districts, um, I can't remember what their current their, their figures are for 1718. Um, Sefton don't charge for the garden waste, so there's already an increase there. They also provide a food collection, although it is an opt-in food collection, so I don't think that their tonnages um, that they get through that are, are that great. Um, I do know that they have recently, within the last year, joined the MRF over at Yellow Moss. Previously, they actually did, um, they did a, a source separated collection at the curbside, so it wasn't a commingled collection of one bin. Um, and I think they could collect more materials as well. So I know, I think, I mean, that is, that is probably why theirs is. Is higher, is higher than ours. I know when we didn't have a subscription service, um, we, we were the highest recycling um, in, in Merseyside. Um, with, uh, with regards to other, other counts, I say some, some of the, the higher performing, so you're, you're 55 or 60 percent, um, A, they collect a lot more green waste. So garden and food, they're collecting a lot more than, than we ever have done. Um, and a lot of them also have higher dry recycling because they collect more materials than us. So they will collect, they will collect cartons, they'll collect other plastics. Um, I do know that Trafford have, have only recently um, introduced the, uh, the charge for the garden waste. I mean, I think that's again, it's only probably in the last year to 18 months. And I also know that theirs is, is one of the recycling that has been reducing year on year. Um, the other thing with Trafford is they have a reduced general waste collection. So they only collect a 140 litre bin every fortnight, whereas ours is a 240 litre bin. Um, Manchester authorities, um, they all collect their food and garden together, as you said. Um, and Food and garden waste mixed together has to be treated in a different manner to just garden waste by itself. Um, the food element in it means that it's subject to the animal byproduct laws, which means that it has to be treated at a very high temperature. 
so whereas our garden waste, it just goes to windrow composting, which is basically they lay it out in a, in a line and then they turn it, they turn it, they turn it. Um, if it's got food waste, it has to be done in a sealed unit. Um, it's much, it's much more expensive. Uh, it's a much more expensive way of treating the garden waste element because actually winter composting is quite cheap. So if you mix it in, then with if you're looking at it, for example, we would have 13,000 tonnes of garden waste and we probably have about 8,000 tonnes of food waste. So you're treating all of that 13,000 tonnes at a much higher rate because of the 8,000 tonnes that you're putting in. Um, when we did trial it, we had, we had a lot of problems with that in vessel compost or that sealed unit. As you say, the technology has moved on. Um, but I think environmentally, the, uh, uh, the treating the food separately as in an anaerobic digester is actually better than mixing them all together and treating them all as, a, as putting them all into an in vessel composter. Um, that doesn't mean that it can't be looked at in light of how much it costs to collect food waste as well. Um, perhaps that's something that could be that could be looked into um, as a uh, in the task of the industry. Does that answer what you yes. think? That answer is very funny, thank you. Tony? Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, a couple of points about a couple of questions. The um, first one is um, with regards to uh, the recycling rate, so around 33.2 now, do you think the maximum we can achieve is 42.4? On my frequent visits to bits, bits and recycle, owing to the amount of opposition put when we decided to start charging for garden waste, I didn't get a garden uh, bit and I still want I was pure spite. Um, right. So I do look, look at the recycling levels when I'm actually there. Um, it's always above 50%. I've never seen it below 50% in every visit that I've made. Uh, I've seen it over nearly uh, uh, 60%, uh, 58.5 or something it was. So, where, where's the slippage then? Because that's a massive amount of going each year, 33 points. So I know we go to other recycling centres as well, uh, but that's a, that's, a, that's a major drop somewhere else in the water if we're not achieving it at the other sites. Um, the other point would have been around flats. So, flats effectively, you get charged twice basically for delivery. You, you pay in your service charge um, for uh, waste removal and you pay your council tax as well. So, the, the, many of the old blocks, um, the, some come to mind, I mean, the, the channel in particular, and then in policy, there just isn't the facilities there to be able to actually um, have a segregation of, of waste. So, what happens there, and what, what incentives or what service can we provide, uh, owing to the fact that the pain over and above most people's uh, uh, notion of rate for collection of waste, what can we do there to try and improve things? So I'm sure that that's an immense amount of uh, impact on our recycling rate. And the last one of the points, um, having lived through and experienced Newcastle on Blimes uh, and recycling and collection service, and believe me, it's, uh, it's not good, uh, but they were up at 56%. However, uh, you had 11 um, bin receptacles, so it's one, one for tins, one for cardboard, one for paper, one for plastics, non-recycled, non one for something else, and it goes on and on. Now, it was ridiculous. I did not manage to get 56%, I don't know, because no one ever used all of those um, circles. They, they were mostly blowing down the street uh, when they recycled. People were turning up, I was going to say. Although the figures look good, uh, completely unworkable, especially if you've got, um, let's say, for everyone's sake, in any of the areas where we've got um, roads and tennis houses, or flats again, completely unworkable. So whilst on paper it would look like they've had a rapid increase, please don't try to uh, uh, emulate that one because it was, an, uh, it was a disaster for the actual people who uh, live there. I think most of those were statements rather than questions. No, no, there was a, there was a recycle one there. Uh, why is it so low in comparison? Yeah, okay, so the household waste recycling centre that you go to, that percentage recycling is actually what is recycled at the household waste recycling centre. So um, that is higher because they have so many separate bins. Because um, the, the household waste recycling centres are actually managed by 
the disposal authority. They are run by them, so they have their own contracts with um, the VLA the at the moment to separate out as much as possible. And again, it's, it's a lot of it is the high weight. So your furniture, carpets, mattresses, um, metals, scrap metals, so fridges, freezers, it's all the high weight things. So when you actually see how much refuse is actually being thrown away, black bag, um, compared to everything else, the recycling rates are quite good. The, the staff that work there are really good at engaging with people as they come in, making sure that they're not just putting everything into the residual, they're actually separating out their recycling. So um, that's good for us because that means that as a Mer as Merseyside, our target, as I mean our recycling rate as Merseyside is actually much higher because um, we get a little bit of, of all that as, as being sort of under the Merseyside umbrella. Uh, going on to your question about flats, um, Flats have always been and are up and down the country quite um, challenging due to the fact that quite often the bins aren't anybody's responsibility. Uh, so if somebody uh, if somebody contaminates a bin, that, that's it, it's contaminated. Somebody else doesn't feel like they should go in and take that contamination out and put it into the right bin. So it's finding some kind of system that works that people who uh, Recycle, know how to recycle, know how the system, know how the system works. Um, can do that without all of their efforts going to waste because no pun intended. In case somebody puts a residual bag in there. Um, that said, RAP, as who are the Waste Resources Action Program, have recently completed a, a quite a lengthy research um, a piece of research to look at how best to engage with, with flats and apartments, um, what kind of messages actually work better uh, in, in flats. And so we're, we're hoping to be able to look into those and actually see how we can implement that in, in the world, see how we can improve recycling there. And just your last point, we won't be going to separate separate bins. <laughs> that's, that's not just to you, just one point to the, the, I think a good way to actually look at in sense of it incentivize flats as I just said, they effectively, I'm sure the portfolio holder for finance and the, the finance director will have a seizure in the area saying it, but they're, they're effectively paying twice and then they, they, they make an, a, a, an extra supplement for um, waste removal through their service charge as well as, and one, one of the ways to do it would be look to incentivize it through the council tax to actually give them relief for uh, separating their own waste. I'm, I'm almost convinced that if people, if people were going to get Cut in their council tax uh, because they would be paying different privately through the service contract um, for separating waste. They're almost convinced that you get a response then. I will offer a, a proactive suggestion, Steve. Uh, so, uh, Um, in many cases. 
Um, it then brings a bit of bad feeling as well sometimes with neighbours because it's like, why do they not have to recycle? Why um, can they just put whatever they want in, in the green bins and it gets taken away? Um, I mean, it's, in many cases, in some cases, it, it's, it's a genuine requirement that they need that additional capacity. They just didn't realise that there was a process to get authorisation for that. Um, so by doing an audit, by taking the bin away, then we find out, well, actually, we've got, we've got eight people living in the house, we actually need this. And then it gives you an opportunity to speak to them and say, okay, that's fine. Um, do you have a great recycling bin? Can we help you with some of the information that you need to improve your recycling? Um, so that's, I mean, that's, that's why, why we're doing it. It's one, of, one of the ways that we can help reduce our residual waste and help our recycling rate. I can't see how you need to take it away though, if you leave it there, people will use it. Yeah, I mean that's the, the idea is we will take it away. We will take away the option. You're using it take it away. It, yeah, exactly. We'll take it away so they can't use it. And we'll say to them, we've taken it away. Did you know you can get a free recycling bin if you don't have one? Okay, thanks very much, Jenny. Just, just before we move off that topic, something that, that I've been asked, if we are doing a green bin audit, which we clearly are, and we're on the cusp of perhaps removing some of them, where there's a perception that they're not needed, or it's known <coughs> that actually that they're not needed, can we let the elected members in those particular wards where green bins are going to be removed know that they're going to be removed before the complaints start back to them? Please, I think that would be really useful. That, that would be fair. Uh, no, anybody who's, who has been audited and um, it's been decided, and they, they phoned in and they've had a discussion with somebody, and the decision is that the bin will be removed, they will also receive a letter from the council to say, you have had an audit, um, you've been given recycling advice, we think that you don't, uh, you don't need this additional capacity anymore, we're going to take away your bin. Um, so it's just that final notice really from the council to say you are being removed from our list of authorised additional properties. But I'm, I'm more than happy to send that out once we have that complete list of, of those addresses that are being removed. I'm, I'm just more happy than, more than happy to send that out. I think, I think we need to look at that just as you answer that. I'm just wondering whether there might be some, you know, some data protection issues about you know, the work because it, yes. it's based on family circumstances such as how many children you've got, have you got babies with nappies and things like that. So I, I think we need to take that away and have a look at that. Yeah, yeah, well, they they have to have to have to yeah. so I think that I'm sure they go to, to the local board member anyway, but I, I think there might be a, a data protection issue there in terms of sharing yeah. information. Okay, thanks, Mark. Shall we want to? No, 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 Chair. No, 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 no. Ryan. Oh, sorry, it was the other telling me. Sorry, I do apologize. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Uh, very informative. I think you've kind of answered my question already regarding Classbridge and Binston and the numbers for recycling uh, proficiency there, not going into Wirral's uh, domestic numbers, is that correct? Yes, yeah, that is correct to say that. Those sites are run by the disposal authority. So it's, if you, if you ever want to have a look at the, uh, the recycling figures for the UK, um, the disposal authority has its own recycling rate. Um, so because they run the civic community sites, the household waste recycling centres, um, that, is, that, is, that is their recycling, <coughs> recycling rate. Um, but we do, they do sort of show it as sometimes as a mercy side wide. Surely that hamstrings us when it comes to all the numbers. That would be so much better because the, 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 the recycling rates are so much higher in that places. If they would look just purely to the little numbers, they would bring the numbers up and help you reach your targets. Yeah. We, I mean, we have to report our own. There is, there is still a line that says we're all council, Liverpool City Council, <coughs> South Council. Um, it's just for sort of, sort of so for the 50% by 2020, there is agreement that we have a pools target with Merseyside, which is, I think, is currently 43%. Still not 50%, but it's certainly higher than, than 32. Um, but, but you're right, that if that's 
why whenever I talk about girls recycling, I say it's 33 percent because that is the council's recycling rate, and it's it's our it's our own recycling rate that we need to we need to increase. It would be any way in the future of taking that those things out and solely put them into wheels fix because as people do to how busy these places are, you know that's going to instantly inject. I, I, see what, I understand what you mean, I mean taking wise recycled on the wearable and, and putting that. Um, I don't know. I would, I would, uh, I'd have to, I'd have to see what is. What I think it would depend on what is the, um, what we have to lawfully uh, claim. Really, at the moment we have to by law we submit our figures and they submit their figures. So I don't know whether. I think the only way of doing that would be to become a unitary authority, uh, which would mean that we would be a collection and a disposal authority, um, and that would probably be a whole lot of legal involved to get to that point. Thanks, uh, Brian. Thank you, Chair. Through you, Mr. Walsh, thank you for the presentation. And my question, Chair, really is, is it fair to say that still are 